People have about 10 more hours until they have to be out of here. The governor just wrapped up a press conference urging all those people that should have been out at 8 o'clock this morning to leave immediately. Pocahontas gradually starting to pick up the pieces after that river did reach record levels. That baby was actually brought here to Arkansas Children's Hospital yesterday with a core temperature of 102. Now Sheriff Woods here in Jefferson County tells me that just a few days before that, two other inmates were actually able to breach that facility. Police say graffiti like this could cause Perspective businesses to tag Cersei as a bad city. Here, I'm going to throw this stick in here and it just like disappears because what this is is some pipe that leads under the road. Obviously, sexual abuse of a child is a very painful thing for these victims to talk about even decades later. Now, in the interview, we disguised the voice and identity of one of those victims to protect his anonymity, and another chose to recall what happened to him through a statement, both hoping to help others and work toward changing the statute of limitations in Arkansas for this type of abuse. And this has gone on for 45 years. This victim, who wishes to remain anonymous, was one of several who, as a boy, endured repeated sexual abuse at the hands of Father John McDaniel. I call that man a Satan. It happened at Our Lady of Holy Souls in Hillcrest in the early 1970s, and he was not alone. Another victim recalling McDaniel telling him he was a horrible, evil kid. No one will ever love him. God hates him. He would never have any friends, and that this was their secret. He pointed at me and told the teacher, don't ever believe anything that boy says or tells you. You cannot trust anything he says. Both were subjected to sexual acts as well. They were never the same after that. Something was permanently um, broken in them. Um, after these experiences. Recently, a settlement was reached where the Diocese of Little Rock agreed to compensate the victims for the child's sex abuse claims. Attorney Josh Gillespie believes for the first time in Arkansas. But while the compensation was significant for the state, it wasn't as it should have been because of the statute of limitations. Until Arkansas changes um, its outdated statute of limitations for child sex abuse claims, the diocese is, is never going to, um, to truly do right by them. Both victims for decades thought they were the only ones. They wanted to share their stories so others would know they aren't alone. He sure made a hell of a mess in my life, but he will not destroy me. Now, Father John McDaniel died in 1974. He was one of at least 12 priests in Arkansas who have had credible sexual abuse allegations made against them in the last 70 years. Both of these victims, however, say they have been able to keep their faith due in part to clergy members who, as one of them describes, are truly men of faith. Two houses hit just on this block of South Pine, and then within the next half hour, two more houses hit just two and a half miles from here in a separate part of town. Neighbors telling me that this senseless shooting is getting out of hand. I try not to be by windows and things like that. Within a few blocks of Diane Jackson's home, two houses were struck with bullets overnight. It's not unusual. Something happens all the time in this neighborhood. One of the houses hit is where 19-year-old Key lives. I was, I was walking. I just heard, I just heard, I thought it was, was firecrackers. He lives in the Ringo Street house with his grandmother. Some of those bullets striking a car and all along the side of their home. It was crazy. It was crazy. Shocking. A few hours earlier, a teen was shot in the face in a car parked on West Charles Bussey. Remnants of broken glass, shell casings, and crime scene tape marking that scene. And LRPD's shot spotter picking up the shooting on South Pine. Jackson says she thinks more lighting and proper maintenance of people's properties could make a lot of difference, along with surveillance cameras. But right now, she says they take cover when they start hearing shots. I think it's, it's sad that we have to do that. And that's why people move out of the neighborhood and they become so bad. And police haven't made any arrests in any of these shootings, so if you do have any information, you're asked to contact Little Rock Police. Reporting live in Little Rock tonight, I'm Caitlin Reardon, KRK4 News. This seems to be the only place in town where there's any water coming out. People tell me that they woke up on Wednesday to no water. Nothing. The whole city is out of water. Renee Hollis says the city's water system has been a problem for years, but it's never been as bad as it is now that there's none. According to officials, the water well in Carthage stopped pumping, leaving the town high and dry. You don't have any water, that's the basic life sustainer. You got to have water. 
and uh, we don't have any right now. The National Guard and Office of Emergency Management brought tanks to the center of town that will be filled daily so people can get water for bathing and flushing. And Walmart donated 18 pallets of bottled water, but even this supply won't be enough for how long the town will be without. So we're looking at a time frame of a minimum of 120 days, possibly six months. Carrie Dunn, director of Dallas County OEM, says a new well has to be drilled and then it has to be certified, but that's only the beginning. Due to the emergency situation, wherever that well would be drilled, we'd have to use the old uh, system for purification until something further could be done, but that's just a stopgap measure. He expects the project will cost around $5 million, funds the tiny town doesn't have. Until then, uh, we will certainly entertain any donations to the city of Carthage for water, uh, drinking water. Pray for us, pray for our community because we're going to need it. Three months is a long time without water. And the Arkansas Health Department actually has to come out daily to test this water to make sure that it's safe. Reporting in Carthage, I'm Caitlin Reardon.